welcome to GSS score and uh, in our uh, uh, constant endeavor to improve upon things and to help the aspirants. Uh, one of the gestures we have brought today with uh, you all is understanding the previous year questions you know. So that is what called PYQ you know. So, so aim here is the PYQ previous year questions to understand and, and uh, for the doable manner we will take the last five years questions in the GS mains paper 2 of course uh, IR we will be focusing on IR that is what our purpose will be. Now when uh, uh, we improvise upon our own uh, gestures and efforts uh, uh, so this discussion previous year question paper discussion is about trend analysis you know you can see here the word trend analysis and this word itself trend analysis uh, shows the importance that uh, this this lectures or the series of lectures that might have on uh, almost every serious candidates who are preparing for this exam right. So why do we need to know what is the trend? Is it really important to know the trend? Many answers can be given to this question if you are wondering that why I am doing so. Uh, so, um, without knowing the trend of civil services examination is actually uh, you know, falling into a bottomless uh, you can say well you know. Because the syllabus or, or the range of questions could be as diverse as uh, anyone can imagine and with this uh, focusing on every part of the syllabus equally could be a fatal mistake and therefore every serious candidates uh, every serious candidate actually tries to understand uh, before we start uh, reading a particular section or topic that how much the relevancy of that topic or section is and even within the section for example IR polity these are different sections even within one section of IR there is syllabus defined and uh, uh, that could be um, slightly uh, very ge slightly generalized way the syllabus is a general uh, uh, outline of international relations framework uh, from where the questions may be expected in the men's examination but when we go for the last five years of trend analysis and and try to understand and and segregate dissect uh, break up uh, all the questions one by one last five years then we come across some very startling revelations you know and therefore uh, when I was doing this exercise I myself was surprised when we I put it into the excel sheet and figures and facts and then the uh, trend which came at the end was uh, a kind of surprising for us as well. So the trend analysis ka fayda hai, fayda do teen mein aapko batata hoon. Number one is that uh, you will exactly know which part of the syllabus you need to focus more because as I said not every part of the syllabus will be equally relevant for the year in which you are giving the men's examination. Since UPSC follows trend for uh, four or five years continuously or sometimes more and they start changing it. So the current trend is quite fixed about uh, asking the questions of IER from a particular part of syllabus. So if we know the trend well, we know this. Second, the whole purpose of this, this session trend analysis and other uh, sessions which we will have in international relations uh, PYQ will enable you to exactly find out the sources uh, because the sources may not be very fixed in international relations uh, depending on the topic uh, that from where you will try to gain knowledge uh, for them. So the sources could be as diverse as some uh, ORF uh, website articles or could be a Hindu newspaper editorials or other articles or it could be world focus uh, or it could be sometimes traditional such as 
uh, V and Khanna kind of books that you may always refer, always refer. So with trend analysis, we will always uh, prefer and, and to make you enable, capable uh, to find out exactly according to the topic which you are doing, which uh, source will be most optimal for your um, maximum gain or maximum marks in the examination. Now the third thing why we should do and try to understand trend analysis in IR is uh, what you say that uh, uh, we will uh, try to learn some answer writing tricks as well because we are covering last five years questions of IR GS paper 2 and, and we will give 10 to 12 minutes on each one of them each one of those questions not in this video but in next videos uh, next session. Uh, so, we will exactly know ki how we need to start thinking when we suddenly see a particular question in the examination and since time is very less, space is equally crunched. So, how quickly we can find out the basic structure of that answer so that uh, nothing goes wrong even in very short span of thinking time you have before you start writing the answer answer. So, with this uh, motive, uh, this trend analysis or this the PYQ, uh, last five years questions, understanding them, talking about them uh, will definitely help you um, sitting from your home uh, to understand exactly where to go and what to do, right. So, with this, let us start our, our, our the first session today, which will be having a topic of trend analysis and this will be for uh, what you can say, uh, understanding the entire uh, scope of international relations uh, in, in uh, um, GS men's paper 2 examination. Now, before we go ahead, uh, it is better to start with understanding the syllabus. And so, so syllabus is now in front of you, right? Syllabus is in front of you. And here, uh, see, four pointer syllabus is given by UPSC. The four pointer syllabus, see, first is India and its neighborhood. You know, neighbors, Parosi. sounds easier, I will explain it a bit in, in more uh, broader way uh, uh, in next 2 to 5 minutes, right. So neighborhood is a general term, that is why the trend analysis is needed. Neighborhood is a general term, just by knowing neighborhood, it is not sufficiently known what exactly comes under the neighborhood. For example, questions like China is also a neighbor and Nepal, Bhutan are also neighbors. So does it mean that India's relation or diplomacy or aim should have some similar kind of constraints or challenges or solutions in dealing with all the neighbors? Can we have any uh, one fits all solution? That is why neighborhood with your general term, generic term you can say, uh, is you can say not a very proper word to exactly understand uh, how to deal with India's and its neighbors relations, neighbors relations, right. For example, again, uh, we have different kind of neighbors, you know like we have island countries like Sri Lanka and Maldives. We have coastal and land countries such as Myanmar and Bangladesh and Pakistan. We have totally landlocked countries as our neighbor that is like Bhutan and Nepal. And we have a kind of great power as our neighbor that is China. Not to forget the neighborhood from uh, of course, you know, Myanmar that is very significant. So, the, all these neighbors are not uh, to be bracketed into the same category uh, to understand how exactly India will have the relationship. 
so we need to find some classification uh, uh, in in this term neighborhood so that uh, we can understand what exactly uh, to do in this in this topic and and uh, before I go to the second part of the syllabus, uh, equally important will be to understand that there can be I mean, uh, concepts like near abroad or far abroad. Near abroad, I mean that is Central Asia is called near abroad. So that is called a kind of uh, neighborhood, extended neighborhood. East Asia activist policy uh, is called extended neighborhood. And uh, with, with immediate neighborhood and extended neighborhood, there are various foreign policy challenges that definitely India will have. Definitely India will have, right? So with this, uh, we need to understand how exactly. Now, the second is bilateral, regional and global groupings and agreements involving India and or affecting India's interest. In general, the second topic is saying everything in worldwide issue. Worldwide issue kya hota hai? Worldwide issue matlab, puri dunia mein aisi koi bhi ghatna which is impacting India or India's interest. So here it means that uh, India may or may not be directly connected with those issues. For example, we are not directly connected with in, uh, US, uh, Russia and Ukraine crisis at present. But <coughs> India's interests are vitally challenged uh, by this escalation of tension between uh, Ukraine, and Russia uh, and, and US for that matter. So how do we understand which global issue is important for India? And if this is not a tougher part, you can say, oh, it's very easy to know them. Then, then believe me, more interesting and challenging portion will be that even if we understand that Ukrainian issue is important for India, then the real challenge starts. How exactly you will start thinking for the main answer that what are those interests of India and to which approach, to what approach, in which way you will start your pen to fill few pages in the main censor sheet and what will be your conclusion at the end. So therefore, we, if we need the trend analysis, if we know this, uh, we will know the syllabus much better. Syllabus much better. Then the third is effect of policies and politics of developed and developing countries. So third is part of topic number two, but it is becoming more specific politics of developed and developing countries. So the politics of developed countries, you know, basically the Western countries, there are developed countries, uh, are, are totally different, totally different. So politics of EU, the politics of US security, the politics of US in Indo-Pacific area, economic politics, other issues such as globalization or something like that, politics on technology, politics on vaccine. So all these major themes of international relations, they start with developed countries. And developing countries contribute into shaping the nature of those issues, definitely lesser than the developed countries, but they have a significant say. In, in how those issues means the world politics will impact India's interests and uh, see this word uh, Indian diaspora it means that uh, people living abroad so diaspora means Indian people living abroad and you know that there are two kinds of people in general we know living abroad those people who are not Indian citizen but their forefathers were Indian citizen before independence or they could have got Indian citizenship before independence but they choose not to join and remained in other countries. So their, their uh, successors, uh, uh, their progenies 
आर कॉल्ड पर्सन ऑफ इंडियन ओरिजिन पी आई ओ एंड देन वी हैव अ ब्रॉडर कैटेगरी ऑफ नॉन रेजिडेंट इंडियंस एन आर आईज सो बेसिकली एन आर आईज आर टू काइंड ऑफ पीपल हम उनको जनरली इस्तेमाल करते हैं बट लीगली स्पीकिंग एन आर आई मीन्स द पीपल हु शिफ्टेड टू अदर कंट्रीज फॉर जॉब और एजुकेशन फॉर एनी थिंग एल्स बेसिकली आफ्टर and they are still indian citizens but if anyone who shifted to foreign country and acquired uh, citizenship of that country like an indian going to us in 1990s and acquiring uh, citizenship of us in 10 years then that person may be called you can say overseas citizen of india but now overseas and pio has been mixed merged तो अब इंडिया में इंडियन डायस्पोरा के लिए पीआईओ और ओवरसीज अलग अलग वर्ड नहीं है सो यू कैन इंक्लूड टू काइंड ऑफ इंडियन पीपल लिविंग अब्रॉड एंड दे विल बोथ बी कॉल्ड इंडियन डायस्पोरा एंड द फर्स्ट विल बी इंडियंस लिविंग अब्रॉड विद द फॉरेन सिटीजनशिप बट दे हैव रूट इन इंडिया कॉल पी आई यूज एंड दो पीपुल लिविंग अब्रॉड स्टिल विद इंडियन सिटीजनशिप they have not acquired foreign citizenship and they are called nris diaspora is very important so somehow diaspora plays a very strong role in shaping of good relations preventing the bad relations i'll give just one line example so almost 3 million indians are staying in us and those 3 million indians who are staying in us are the most educated and top earning class living in us with this respect the indian community has the money the power uh, the the social status which they have they have organized into very strong pressure group lobby group to support indian foreign policy in us congress and us politics so the favorable stance taken by indian diaspora in us has helped india to cement its relations with us after the end of the cold war specifically uh, after 1998 uh, pokhran 2 it is the indian diaspora living in us played such a vital role and if this is not enough then i'll tell you much more um we can say utilitarian point that indians living abroad earning money abroad in dollars they send billions of dollars every year and no surprise there for that india is the highest remittance earning country in the world successively so almost 60 to 70 billion dollars india receive from the indian expat workers or indians living abroad so just imagine that how it helps in our current account um, deficit current account deficit if not for this then it would have been much wider much wider so therefore indian diaspora is an important thing when when we will go further into seeing that uh, how many questions from what of these areas came uh, in the last 5 years then we will know few things very interesting and the last one we have is important international institutions agencies and forums their structure and mandate so it is basically international organization international organization so one or two question you can always expect one question maximum every year from this thing uh, so see uh, we need to understand that uh, four or five questions you will get every year from my year it is not necessary that uh, upsc is having some foundation that they will have to justify all the four pointers of the syllabus and they'll have to give one question each from all of them but Uh, when we go for trend analysis we find that uh, certain topics have not been touched in the means uh, um, one or two of them have not been touched in last 5 years 
and all the 1920 questions which we have got in mains examination last five years in IR section are only from one or two of the part of the syllabus. So how will it help? Mira, why pillage? So with this we need to understand that it is international organization. It is international organization. That's what the whole thing is. So IO United Nations, WHO, I mean many other Shanghai Cooperation Organization, then you have uh, ILO, WHO and uh, so many of them. So is it really possible to read all the international organizations because there may be more than you can say 3000 international organizations and NGOs working there. And even if we go for the uh, very top organizations that list could be not less than 20. And if I will say you will get one question of 10 marks. So read all the 20 organizations believe me that will not be a very wise idea. Because for 10 marks reading 20 organizations or 20 questions in organization will not be a very wise idea. So that's what we need. That's why we need a trend analysis so that we can actually understand what we need to do, what not to do, what not to do. Okay. Let's go for the next uh, further analysis of, of the whole thing. Now let's come to the analysis. Analysis as we have said that uh, last five years is the focus last five years right so that is 2021 was the last then 2020 then 2019 18 17 of course you understand that's how the five years we have five years and how many questions total questions we got every year we got every year question 4 in 2000 so total question in 2021 was 4 in 2020 was 3 then again 4 4 4 so how many questions you got in last 5 years 19 so total 19 questions we have got in the last five years from international relations right that's what so not all the 19 questions are equally divided from the syllabus in the syllabus right so uh, let's understand that uh, what are the themes various themes means if we categorize the syllabus into something else like if we categorize the syllabus uh, like uh, you can say India and peripheral countries peripheral matlab neighborhood but we will use the word periphery India and its periphery because neighborhood se thoda sa alag word hai and it represents in better fashion the reality of India's relations with the neighboring countries. So India and periphery, right? So pahla topic yehi tha, India neighborhood. Kitne question aaye paanch saal mein? Zero, 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 zero. See the beauty thing, thing is, so this is theme number one. Suppose this is theme number one. How many questions? Zero. Now, wh what is this trend? This trend itself is very startling here that in last five years UPSC has not asked even a single question from India uh, relations, India's relations with you can say uh, Pakistan or, or uh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan or, or anything like that. Bharat or Poloski Deso se ek bhi sawal nahi puche gai. Trend dekhi, change ho raha hai. Means India is understanding foreign policy is getting maturer. And the UPSC is actually believing 
that international relations is basically India and big countries. Smaller countries are definitely important because they are, but IR ke decision making kis ke haath mein hai? Bade powers or international organizations ke haath mein. Then comes the second part, second uh, uh, theme that is called middle powers. Middle powers. Right? Middle powers. मिडिल पावर्स में कौन कौन आते हैं आई विल टेल यू लेटर बट प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड जापान इजराइल जर्मनी यूएई सऊदीज ऑस्ट्रेलिया इंडोनेशिया दीज ऑल कंट्रीज आर कंसीडर्ड मिडिल पावर्स एंड सो इंडियाज रिलेशन विद मिडिल पावर कंट्रीज ग्रेट पावर नहीं स्मॉल पावर भी नहीं मिडिल पावर हु आर नॉट ए स्मॉल लाइक नेपाल भूटान बट नॉट ग्रेट लाइक यूएस चाइना एंड रशिया राइट सो विद मिडिल पावर कंट्रीज हाउ मेनी क्वेश्चन वी हैव गॉट दैट्स वॉट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इन इन द टोटल कैटेगरीज यू नो सो मिडिल पावर इज so we got this year zero previous year zero then 111 right so last two years middle power se bhi koi sawal nahi but 19 18 and 17 one question each so total question 19 and two topics completed how many questions we got three questions remaining 16 so what topics it means one thing is very clear that almost all the 16 questions are now uh, from the rest of the two themes which we will make and the third a uh, theme which we will make for our understanding is what is called great powers india and great powers ग्रेट पावर्स में हु आर द कंट्रीज ओनली थ्री यूएस चाइना एंड रशिया और समथिंग रिलेटेड विद देम आई हैव केप्ट सो एनालिसिस इज इफ यूएस इज देयर इन द क्वेश्चन और समथिंग अबाउट इंडो यूएस रिलेशन इन वट एवर डिमेंशन इट इज देयर इज जस्ट देन द क्वेश्चन विल बी फ्रॉम द ग्रेट पावर्स ग्रेट पावर्स राइट so uh, two questions then two questions we have and then one 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 total seven questions we are getting from the great powers so we have now zero plus we have three now we have seven so total 10 questions means the nine questions will be from the topic number 4 nine questions will be from the topic number 4 and what is that topic number 4 io and ro international organizations and regional organization and politics international organizations and international organizations and in, uh, uh, regional organization and regional uh, political development like central asia east asia you know middle east west asia to region ke bare mein pucha hai desh ke bare mein nahi to io international organizations like uh, un unesco regional organization like sarc asean and and um, shanghai cooperation organization or bimstick something like that and so uh, nine questions are from there definitely so two questions this year then one question 
then we have two questions again here then in 2017 again uh, we have two and two means uh, two questions out of four to five questions two questions regularly come from this fourth thing so now please understand this is nine so zero question from theme number one theme number one is what theme number one is uh, you can say uh, internet up uh, india and periphery then three questions from theme number two india and middle powers seven questions from theme number three which is india and great powers and remaining nine questions from theme number four that will be international organization or the regional organization and the politics and other global issues maybe like climate change so climate change is international uh, we have we have taken that here taken that here. right so this is what the trend is so where to put your energy most now you know now you know and the best part is that uh, trying to understand the fourth one fourth theme fourth theme that will be uh, more on the basis of what you have in the current affairs because these are the fast developing areas and when you read uh, india and periphery for example then it will be more like uh, you can say uh, reading the traditional uh, course content traditional course content because believe me it is not easier to find out that how india pakistan relations developed in last 10 years because actually there is no development as such but if you see at the same time uh, india and and uae relations or you will see india and in indo pacific actist policy then uh, you can write a book on the developments which have taken place in the last five years forget about 150 words only so with this we need to understand that uh, not every area so four things which we will take in IR first is peripheral theme third second is middle powers theme third is great powers theme and fourth is international organizations regional organizations and other global issues if there are there if they are there right so with this thing we we, we, we will uh, cover the whole whole uh, trend analysis session so this is the first session we have and all the other sessions which we will have is we will have one session each on the theme number one two three and four and after we complete four sessions on four theme in understanding how exactly we need to do in each one of them we will go on um, we can say question wise question wise uh, analysis of last five years questions so the mandate now you can understand what we'll do so uh, focus is very clear that uh, we should focus more on theme number four followed by theme number three followed by theme number two followed by theme number one so theme number one while i start studying and focusing will come at the last this is the benefit of trend analysis and believe me before uh, these last five six years this story was just opposite the nine question would be coming from uh, uh, peripheral countries here in nine questions are coming from fourth theme in the last five years last five years okay so so uh, of course i mean uh, you understand that uh, right so so uh, this was a kind of uh, understanding of the questions which came in in the last a uh, few years now uh, before i go um, a bit of 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 detailing of introduction of international relation as a discipline uh, we need to understand what sources do we have 
टू स्टडी आई आर सोर्सेस वॉट सोर्सेस विल यू फॉलो राइट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रेंड एनालिसिस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर जीएस मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सोर्स फॉर जीएस इज न्यूज पेपर्स रिसर्च आर्टिकल्स लाइक ओ आर एफ आई डी एस से कार्नेगी इंडोमेंट जर्नल वर्ल्ड फोकस एन एफ वर्ल्ड फोकस एंड देन फोर्थ विल बी सम आई आर बुक और नॉट आई आर बुक सम फॉरन पॉलिसी बुक and in this i will recommend you in the case you want to so vn khanna good enough book traditional book you will also say sir there are books like rajiv sikri and many other people like puspes pant and plethora of writers yes you can buy any one of them my recommendation is vn khanna you read whatever you want doesn't matter the book should be on the indian foreign policy to kya padhe newspapers editorials content which are coming daily developments which are happening every hour and enough detail and analysis comes in the news paper so if we are good with the current affairs and and understanding the weekly uh, developments of of international relations if not daily somehow in much more a deeper conceptual manner so that will help you the most followed by orf ids or think tanks in india carnegie think tanks from washington dc uh, so so you can also read their articles if you have access to them they are online available then world focus is a printed journal i mean you can take their uh, annual edition which comes in month of november and december right so so last previous uh, november and december 2020 वन एडिशन जो मार्केट में अवेलेबल है यू कैन बाय और ऑनलाइन यू कैन ऑर्डर वर्ल्ड फोकस सिर्फ साल भर में दो पढ़ना है फिर से देखिएगा मैं क्या बोल रहा हूं वर्ल्ड फोकस वर्ल्ड फोकस मैगजीन इज पब्लिश एवरी मंथ ट्वेल्व बुक्स लेट्स इन ट्वेल्व मंथ्स आई एम आस्किंग यू टू रीड only those booklets which are coming in the months of november and december every year so for those who will be writing mains in 2022 you will definitely write before the magazine is published so uh, the previous november december the last november december magazine world focus is good enough for you buy that read that and then foreign policy book pad lo वो बहुत अच्छा है लॉन्ग टर्म स्टेबिलिटी लेके आता है आपके नॉलेज में तो एनी बुक एंड आई से इंडियन फॉरेन पॉलिसी रिटर्न बाय वी एन खन्ना दो यू कैन चूज एनी बुक विच यू थिंक इज गुड इनफ फॉर द इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस राइट सो विद विद हैविंग सेट सो हैविंग सेट सो वी वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड we need to understand that uh, see how to start i mean how to start thinking on on international relations and uh, considering considering the fact that you all may be quite novice and and very new to this um, this this field of discipline or maybe entirely upsc preparation uh, uh, you can say process so let me tell you in 5 10 minutes 5 10 minutes the theme of the international relations so that 
you should not uh, uh, start thinking in, in, in vacuum or clueless ho ke padhai shuru nahi karta hai aur isliye bhi ye baatein batani zaruri hain kyunki when we will start understanding the questions one by one of the last five years and then then uh, we need to know exactly that uh, what we are allowed to think and what we are not allowed to think even if we may conclude common sensically that uh, what we are not thinking should be included in the thought process uh, and and what we are thinking should be excluded but that's not the way it is because आई आर का अपना फ्लेवर है अपना एक डिसिप्लिन है अपने की कॉन्सेप्ट हैं अपनी मजबूरियाँ हैं और जब तक आप उन मजबूरियों को उसकी स्ट्रेंथ को नहीं सीखेंगे तब तक आई आर के अच्छे आंसर राइटिंग नहीं हो पाएगी सो वट इज आई आर आई आर वर्ल्ड इट सेल्फ इज इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन यू नो सो इट इज रिलेशन सो ऑल काइंड ऑफ रिलेशन आर कॉल्ड रिलेशन यू नो इंक्लूडेड इन रिलेशन it's not that only good relation is relation but also bad relation is also a relation no relation is also a relation distant relation is also a relation similarly moral relation political relation economic relation cultural relation imaginary relation military relation anything can be there there has to be a relation that's what it is so international relations means the total set of relations of a country which is nation state with all other countries in the world that is called international relations that was the first point to international relation mein aisa nahi hai ki modi ji ne kya bola sirf utna hi relation hai nahi what modi ji said about india france relation is the core part of india france relations but that is only one part of relation because that is official india france relation and there can be many factors which are unofficially working behind the scene because for example indian diaspora or the challenges in economic cultural relation or the factors of democracy or france has the veto power system veto power system right so with this kind of thing we need to understand very clearly that relations are more than what is officially said by the government of any country but again never violate the next principle which i'm saying never write against what is the official foreign policy of india ऑफिशियल फॉरेन पॉलिसी जो भारत सरकार बोलती है सही क्या है गलत क्या है इसके डिबेट में फंसना ही नहीं है एंड वट एवर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज सेंग अबाउट इंडिया नेपाल रिलेशन दैट विल बी द की क्रक्स ऑन विच आर आंसर विल बी फ्रेम्ड इन द मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन द सेकेंड थिंग इज आई आर इज प्योरली फॉर्मल so foreign policy language should be quite diplomatic never blunt not to declare any country as enemy any country as god any country as so necessary that india cannot survive with so therefore we know that few countries are enemy or few countries are best friend but we should be very clear in declaring announcing the negative points about any country though you are allowed to go overboard Uh, by highlighting the positive points in the relation with any country to achhi cheezon mein agar kuch 10% zyada hi acha likh dete ho aap emotional ho ke wo chalega lekin negative statements not allowed even 1% beyond the government of indian language third thing is inter uh, next thing is international relations is only about protecting national interest है इंटरनेशनल मत काम है नेशनल सो इंडिया फॉरेन पॉलिसी इज इट्स रिलेशन विद द वर्ल्ड बट पर्पज ऑफ फॉरेन पॉलिसी इज टू प्रोटेक्ट द नेशनल इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया अब ये कह दो कि कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन भी है तो ठीक है क्योंकि इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स में इंटरनेशनल इंटरेस्ट होना चाहिए 
लेकिन होता है नेशनल इंटरेस्ट और यही इसका सबसे इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट सो वेदर वी शुड हैव सम काइंड ऑफ इंटरनेशनल इंटरेस्ट और नॉट यस व्हाई नॉट क्लाइमेट चेंज निगोसिएशन माय गॉड इंटरनेशनल इंटरेस्ट अब सिर्फ इंडिया और अमेरिका का इंटरेस्ट नहीं है सो so, जलवायु परिवर्तन एक ऐसी वैश्विक घटना है जिसके ऊपर किसी भी एक राष्ट्र द्वारा संपूर्ण कार्यवाही नहीं किया जा सकता है एंड देयर फोर नो सिंगल कंट्री कैन डू ए लोन सफिशियंटली टू मिटिगेट द क्लाइमेट चेंज इफेक्ट्स और टू कंटेन द ग्लोबल वार्मिंग एंड देयर फोर इट इज एन इंटरनेशनल इंटरेस्ट न But then you know why COP twenty six Glasgow or before that so many COPs have failed, failed, failed simply because national interest will always win over international interest. This is what the international relation is. Until the nations come together to forget their national interest to some extent and forge international interest as the common principle for all of us. नो ग्लोबल एग्रीमेंट कैन बी डन ऑन एनी इश्यू ऐसा नहीं है कि ऐसा पहले हुआ नहीं है बहुत बार हुआ है बट क्लाइमेट चेंज में कोई इंटरनेशनल इंटरेस्ट डेवलप नहीं हो पा रहा है जैसा कि बाकी और इश्यूज में बहुत बार हो चुका है नेक्स्ट थिंग इन आई आर प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड इट इज अबाउट पावर आई आर इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन में क्या देखा जाता है शक्ति If you are powerful, you are respected. If you are not, you are not. So, worship of power is the primary agenda of international relations for every country. At the same time, power will not be a single factor, a sole factor, a sufficient factor to protect all your national interest. या ये देखिए अजीब सी बात है सभी लोग पावर की ही पूजा करते हैं लेकिन सिर्फ पावरफुल होने से आपके सारे राष्ट्रीय हित सुरक्षित नहीं रहेंगे नॉट ऑल योर नेशनल इंटरेस्ट विल बी प्रोटेक्टेड इफ यू आर सफिशियंटली पावरफुल सो वी नीड मच मोर देन व्हाट इज कॉल्ड पावर व्हाट इज कॉल्ड पावर ठीक है so with this we need to understand the thing is 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 very clearly a uh, uh, situation like this we have right situation like this so power and the last thing before we end the trend and we come to the next session uh, after this will be what you say uh, uh, morality in ir is purely optional you can be moral you can choose to be immoral but morality is not at all any guiding factor to promote national interest morality se fayda hai to morality ka follow kaya kara jata hai aur agar nahi hai to koi bhi desh nahi karta hai pakistan ko aatankwadi bhejne se fayda hai so pakistan is having benefits by sending terrorists in india so it is a moral issue for pakistan to send a terrorist though everybody knows killing innocent people or any person is immoral unethical but for the national interest uh, uh, having a proxy war with india through cross border terrorism becomes a purely ethical national uh, policy so south china sea captured 90% of south china sea Uh, china captured 90% of south china sea it is purely ethical because it is their national interest to har desh morality ko utna hi follow karta hai jitna uske liye faydemand hai to learning lesson kya hai to keep morality as the only tool of analysis in ir is a disaster so you will never talk about morality if Your position is immoral. If यूर पोजिशन इज इमोरल इफ यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉर देखो कहने का मतलब नैतिकता है नैतिकता कोई हमसे बाहर नहीं हो सब होती है मोरलिटी इज इन आई आर नॉट आउटसाइड आई आर सो वट एवर हैपन्स इन आई आर इज ऑलवेज मॉरल इन नेचर 
so with these basic themes ir is a very diplomatic very formal very competitive struggle for power and national interest protection and everybody is talking to everyone having the same purpose a kanar so bimar so definitely there will be a discourses there will be narratives there will be disputes there will be conflicts there will be war and at the end there may also be peace but as we know that ir padhne ka sirf ek line ka fayda hai kya shanti aur suraksha ki sthapna karna to establish peace and stability in the world and in order to establish peace and stability in the world which is uh, a general requirement for every human being at least for majority of us we need to understand the proper uh, contours frameworks key concepts of international relations and by the trend analysis sessions i will definitely uh, make you much more capable than uh, what you were before the start of this pyq program thanks for joining the session we will meet in the next session